What the heck is this map showing? Well, it's making its round on social media, and of course it's showing the last five years of snow versus the average going back to 2008. And boy, they got the color scale right with this one. The blues are indicative of above normal snowfall, and the dookie brown colors here, which include most of the northern tier with all of the major cities across the northern part of the country, and then up and down the east coast, and all of those major cities as well are indicative of below normal snowfall. Large area of real estate getting the shaft in the snowfall department. We need a wipe and a courtesy flush, and we just might get one coming up this winter. Welcome in, friends. Happy Monday morning to you. Hope you had a nice weekend. Nothing like starting the show off with a little bathroom humor. I guess that's what we do here sometimes at Cold Rains Weather World, but in any event, we may be able to flush this map this winter. We're going to see how it plays out, but I'm going to show you a couple of things here as we start the show off that speak to where the pattern might go over the next couple of weeks. Set the table for December. We take, we've take we taken a look at December and even the upcoming winter to some degree over the last couple of videos. I'll have those linked here at the end, so take a look at those if you get a shot. But we're going to start here by taking a look where the pattern's likely to go as we work into the first part of December. This is the European model run out to day five, the operational model. Again, I've talked about this before. We want to use ensembles really as we start to look out at longer time periods. But here's what the European is showing. It's interesting, so I just wanted to show it. As we go on out to day five, not much going on, just a big uh, storm system coming into the West Coast, big ridging across much of the country going to bring warmer than normal temperatures over the next week to 10 days. So you can expect that. And as we get way on out here, look what happens. We start to get a big ridge poking up here north of Alaska. That's our EPO ridge. And when that pops up and turns the EPO negative, we start to see cold air coming out of the Arctic, filtering in toward Canada, eventually potentially toward the United States too, if things line up just right. So you get a big ridge going up there and you also get this big blocking pattern starting to develop in eastern Canada, south of Greenland over here. And uh, by the end of the run, it takes us out to the first couple of days of December, you get a mega block, a big ridge up here in, uh, or in around the tip of Greenland and another big ridge in the Aleutians. This one is not ideal. What it's going to do is send a trough downstream, which would poke a ridge up here into North America. And this would be a very warm pattern for North America had it not been for this big block over here. Okay, so that's uh, one of the things I've talked about before. You get a big block in this space. This is our negative NAO. It suppresses the storm track and it keeps the eastern portion of the United States cool and sends the storm track to the south. And that's what you want to see if you want to see big winter storms in the east. Depending on where you are in the east, you want this thing either stronger or weaker, but still a negative NEO slows the pattern down, allows storms to amplify. This ridge is not ideal here, but again, it's the operational run of the European model and the ensembles may not agree with that. If we take a look at the 850 temperatures, about a mile up off the ground, it gives us a good proxy of what the temperature is going to be like here at the surface. These are above or below normal temperatures is what this map is showing. And uh, you can see here that uh, here's the scale over here, looking at about 15 degrees below normal in the east by the first part of December, should the European operational verify warmer out west. And there you have it. My expectation is this is not going to play out like this, although I do like its propensity to block. Here is the European ensemble for the same time frame. Okay, the EPO ridge is a little bit farther to the north and it's over into the eastern portion of uh, our domain space instead of way out here in the Aleutians. And that would be good. It would keep the air flowing out of the Arctic into the uh, northwestern and central portion of Canada. And uh, that would eventually spill into the eastern or the western United States and the central portion of the country as well. This block shows up here as well in the means. That's good. And I think that'll happen. We've seen the propensity for this blocking over the course course, the last uh, uh, several months, and I think this will continue as we get into the wintertime, and that is good because it will help us to keep that cooler air position in the east. Now, we're not going to go straight cold yet, but here's what we're talking about. And temperatures uh, uh, in the ensemble mean for the European these are, uh, again, 850 actual temperatures now that I'm showing you. Out to five days, much of the southern and eastern portion of the United States, the southern tier anyway, is a warm, chillier across the north, but still above normal for this time of year. And as we get on out toward day seven 
and uh, day eight, look what happens. We start to get very cold air building up here in Canada. That will help with the snowpack because we've got a dearth of snowpack, which I'll show you in a minute, up here in western Canada. And we want that to fill in with snow. And certainly look at these very cold temperatures. We're looking at below zero temperatures, making it all the way into western Canada. That cold air is spilling into the United States. As you can see here, and every everybody starts to cool off to some degree, except maybe South Florida. But still, uh, as we get on out two weeks down the road, the European Ensemble is showing a very cold Canada and a, a propensity for troughing here in the west and chilly temperatures across the north. And that is sort of a step down pattern. And we're looking at this process stepping down as we get into December. Folks in the center, east central and central portion of the country and down in the southeast need to be a little bit patient. We're not going to go and flip the switch just like I talked about the other day. We're not going to flip the switch to winter just like that. It's going to be a step down process and that's good because we get a chance to build that cold air source up here in Canada and build the snowpack too. And that's what we're looking at. If we take a look at the uh, stratospheric warming event we've been talking about, get a little bit of a double dip here. Again, this is the mean of the European weeklies, okay? Taking this stratospheric vortex and weakening it, and we almost get a little bit of a most, uh, like a lot, a lot of the um, actual members take this and get us below the zero line and reverse the wind and keep it light and reversed. And then it starts to rebound as we go on in through the end of December, but still keeping it lower than normal. Here's your normal line right there. So the stratospheric weakening and warming event is still in progress and it will happen. Here is the snow cover for North America and up into the Arctic and over in Siberia. Plenty of snow here. These are our source regions for cold air, so that's good. We need Canada. You can see here in Canada, let me, let me well, it, it's not going to let me because I click off the image, but you can see I'll just circle it right here. This is where we want to see snow. We don't have any snow there. And we want to get snow pack up there in Canada. And uh, here are our anomalies, our departures from normal. So the red is negative. We have negatives here in Canada and the United States, and also here where it really doesn't matter. Everybody else is kind of average. So that's good. And that's what we're seeing there. Now, if we take a look here, I've adjusted the weather bell scale map, folks. So some of you have commented that you couldn't see the timestamps. Well, here they are. We're out at 360 hours. This takes us out to, to uh, the end of the day, Monday, December the 1st. That's 0 Z, Tuesday the 2nd. That'd be 7 p.m. Monday. East Coast time. Here's your scale across the bottom, but uh, this is the snowfall forecast from the European Ensemble over the next few weeks. And there it is going to fill in here in Canada. That would be good. And those cold temperatures will help to keep it sustained without melting. And so plenty of snow to be found in the western United States, particularly in the mountains. And a lot of that's going to fall over the next couple of days in the Sierra Nevadas and parts of uh, Nevada here in the Rocky Mountains as well. Even up here in the northeast, the northern parts looking at picking up some snow. If you can see this map, I've got it scaled back. Let's go to the United States view and we can actually see it a little bit better. There you go. And so you can see uh, potentially some snow across parts of the north and particularly in the west. And that would be in step with how we see the pattern playing out start as we start to get this EPO to develop. Once the EPO develops and matures, then we'll see uh, the uh, pattern kind of shift to the east, get that trough out of the west toward the center portion of the country and eventually into the east as the jet extends and pushes that ridging along the west coast. But that's gonna take a little time to play out. So expect that as we head toward mid-month. MJO is still expected to get on in here into phase eight as we get into December and work through December, January, and February into phase eight, one, and two. And you get a little meandering around in, in phase six. That's over the maritime continent, and that's not going to, it's not surprising to have that happen sort of like a speed bump. Gets into the continent area and sort of slows down a little bit, meanders around, and then heads on out. But the pulse is uh, cohesive, it's coherent, and it's uh, going to continue to move along as most model guidance shows. Hopefully, that will be the case. And it doesn't do a loop-de-loop -loop up here and stall the pattern. But as long as it continues to progress into phase eight and so on and so on and so on, we'll, we'll, we will be in good shape with the pattern in terms of it progressing. And again, here we go. If we take a look at November, December, and January, what our composites look like, we're seeing phase seven 
Phase six is the, where we're going right now, and of course, that's where I'll show you the temperature maps here in a minute, but uh, phase six is warmer than normal across much of the country, and we're going to be in that for a little bit, next several days or so, out to maybe seven, eight days, and then we get into phase seven, and the core of the cold dips into the west, and into the plains, center portion of the country, and this is not always exact, right? I mean, so you're going to see the kind of the strongest signal for phase seven in the middle of the country up to the northern tier, but that could shift a little bit, just depending on the nuances of the pattern, so just know that that and then we get into phase eight pretty much cold from center to the east and phase one is good too and as we get on out into december phase eight's really cold in the east phase one's really cold phase two's really cold too so uh, uh this is the next sort of tri-monthly composite if you will so that's what's going on with the pattern. Now we're going to take a look at the weather coming up over the next several days. Take us through the work week. Got, a, got some storminess, some snowfall to talk about and we'll wrap things up with space weather. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button right down below. Join the cold rain weather team. Give the content a like and uh, leave a comment in the comment section. A lot of people have been telling me, hey, I don't like warm weather and I'm rooting against your cold rain. That's totally fine. We're all brothers and sisters. I got a lot of love for you, but I'm on the other side of the field and I am rooting for that cold to come on in here and give us some snow. Wipe out some of those dookie brown colors. All right. That's what I'm looking forward to. Hopefully we'll see that happen this year. I'm feeling good about some of the signals that I'm seeing there. But anyway, thank you all for, for the support, for the growth that we've had here. And if there's anything I can be in prayer about, let me know about that as well. Got a few alerts to show you here this morning. Certainly winter weather advisories in these purples and some winter storm warnings out here in the west. These will extend for the next couple of days out here and uh, die out as we get on into the early part of the week. And these are up as well. And then you've got a few alerts up here, even a lake effect snow warning. Look at this. Uh, for a band coming off of Lake Erie here into Pennsylvania. I'll show you that here in just a second, but uh, certainly some advisories and winter storm warnings for several inches of snow. Could see as much as six to eight inches of snow up here in the northeast and over here in the west, especially down here in the Sierra Nevadas. Look at this. You can see as much as a foot to two feet of snow in the higher elevations out here. So be prepared for that if you're traveling out there. Ski resorts out there are getting off to a good start. And even up here in the northeast, seeing plenty of snow in some of these ski resort areas up here. If we zoom in here, we can take a look here at some of these snow bands coming off. Look at this. It's zooming in very, very slow today. But up near Jamestown and Erie, boy, picking up some nice snow today. Here, we'll zoom in one more time and see if we can pick up any more cities that are part of this area. Now, they're not showing up uh, very easily. But uh, up here at Ithaca, near Syracuse, seeing some snow up here. We'll just bring this on up here. Looking at Watertown, picking up a few uh, snow showers today. And some of that heavier snow working into uh, Vermont, into Burlington and Montpelier, into northern New Hampshire as well. And so upstate New York, looking at some snow falling this morning. So watch out if you're driving around up there. Jet stream as we go across the next couple of days into the work week. Got a big kind of buckle along the west coast. We're seeing storm activity coming here. Almost got a sort of a quasi subtropical jet type of a split flow thing going on here. See some energy coming in across the north and more energy coming in as we get on into Tuesday and traversing the states. We'll see a little bit of rain shower activity coming in with this piece of energy in the mid-Mississippi Valley and the Tennessee Valley, maybe even to the southeast. That'll dampen out with ridging. And then more energy comes in. You get a little bit of a storm system in Canada, hopefully laying down some snowpack up there. And more energy coming into the west coast and the southern portion of the country as we get on out into Thursday. New system working through the mid-section of the nation and bringing some rain in. It looked like the system was going to wind up and cut to the lakes, but maybe it's not going to do that now as the pattern seems to be a little bit flatter here and could bring a little bit of severe weather down toward uh, the southern plains as we get on in toward the latter portion of the week. And that's what we're looking at from a jet stream standpoint. Still got those bright colors coming in that will persist as we go on out of time. So the active storm track continuing. There's the initial storm system this week as it moves through the center portion of the country, bringing showers into the Mississippi Valley as we get on in toward Tuesday. This is Tuesday afternoon, more rain and snow coming in to the south west and bringing rainfall to much needed areas out well much needed rain to areas where we've seen a lot of drought and then a little bit more shower activity working into the mid-atlantic and the southeast as we get on in toward wednesday morning more storm activity moving into the four corners region on wednesday night into thursday there's thursday and there's that storm system that starts to crank 
in the south central portion of the country you might see a few thunderstorms out of this with more energy behind it bringing more snow to the sierra nevadas and into some of the rocky mountainous areas and we get on into friday evening and that system winds up and starts to push into the ohio valley and we have some snow up here to talk about occasionally as we go through the week in the northeast it's not going to be a big blockbuster storm that lays down two feet of snow but you'll see rounds of snow showers and rounds of rain showers as we head through the week looking at temperatures as we head through the week we're going to start out below normal across the northeast even down to the upper portion of the southeast near normal the rest of the southeast and then we get on in toward the midweek portion of the time frame look at these big bright red colors just baking us here torch pattern for much of the central portion of the country northeast still hanging on to cool air see i didn't say the word anomaly so much today uh, up here in the northeast and back ch uh, chillier air working in off of the pacific as storm systems come into the west and southwest a corner of the country and those warm temperatures just push on to the east as we get on in toward friday and end of the weekend with another little shot a punch of cool air working out of canada to end of the week up in the northeast okay a lot of warm temperatures over the next several days like i told you this is very indicative of phase six of the mjo where we will be at and as we go on out in time of course, I already showed you this, but the European says, hey, guess what? I'm bringing a big block up into Greenland, and we're going to send a big fall front and cool air blast. This is a dry pattern, by the way, folks, so we're not looking at a big storm to go along with this if this were to even come true. Again, this is operational model two weeks out. If it comes true, we'll see nice, cool fall temperatures for much of the east. But not necessarily going to play out the way the operational European says. The ensembles have the core of the chillier air back toward the middle of the country, which is much more in line with where I think the pattern will eventually fall as we head toward early December. That's what we're looking at from a weather standpoint. Now we're going to wrap things up with space weather coming right up. Nothing big going on on the space weather front. Thank goodness. No big X-class solar flares. You can see that no spikes on the X-ray flux chart. Proton flux is down as you would expect with no big CME approaching or hitting the magnetosphere. And the KP is green across the board. The sun looks pretty quiet. No big bright spots facing us. Those would be sunspots. Nothing on the coronagraph. If we take a look at the sunspot disk, there it is. A few green sunspots headed away and nothing right now coming around the limb that we need to be concerned about. The big cluster, the big ugly sunspots on the backside of the sun right now. And surprisingly, no earthquakes have occurred with all of this geomagnetic storm activity. We haven't seen any geological response and so nothing big going on on that side thankfully and here we go we're almost at a new moon that is coming november the 20th and uh, just a couple of days we're down to 6.7 so waxing a crescent and only nine days and change until we get to thanksgiving so we are almost there my friends i'll be back tomorrow with a another episode of cold rains weather world we'll have our weather iq sort of the standard format tomorrow and so tune in for that. I'll have a couple of videos linked at the end of this video here that uh, talked about uh, the winter, upcoming winter and December forecast and all that good stuff. But that is it for today. I hope you've learned a few things and I hope you've had a good time with me. I've had a good time being with you. Thank you for joining me. Hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week ahead. And we'll see you back tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Follow me on X at Real Cold Rain and have a wonderful day. And God bless.